Good morning, beautiful people. This is your girl T from God Will Deliver Ministries, g.w.deliver2020 at gmail.com. I pray that everyone is having a fantabulous day. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Excuse me, I'm trying to adjust my camera. Okay. I'm so not tech savvy. It's okay. Um, Guys, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come humbly before your throne of grace. Firstly, asking that you forgive our sins, our trespasses, and our shortcoming. God, we thank you for the early morning rise, another day to seek you. God, another day to get it right in you. God, we thank you for more knowledge and wisdom and understanding, God, that we may stand against the wiles of the enemy. God, we ask that you put your whole armor on us on today. God, we thank you. We love you for your protection. Um from the enemy, God, and even from the things that we do, God, we thank you for giving us a repentant heart. God, we thank you for reconciling us back to you in Jesus name. Amen. Guys. Okay. I just want to elaborate on something. So I remember I, um, showed you the Kevin Ewan book, um, prayers that work. I hope, um, you invested in that book. It's so awesome. And he gives scriptures behind the prayers. Bless somebody with it um, if you didn't get it. Um, so while looking um, through, um, when I ordered the book, there was other people who he recommended. So it was um, a book about decrees and declares. It, it's also awesome. However, I, I'm not sure. I don't think he... Um, Maybe he he did. He um, recommended this book, and of course I got it. So it says, when Satan plays matchmaker, right? And the undercaption is, exploring the spiritual side of narcissism. The book just came. Um, I am, um, I prayed and I asked God, um, is, is it okay for me to read it? Guys, um, I am reading this book. I'm starting um, today. Um, I want to share some of the things just of the opening book with you. Um, mind you, forgive me if this is triggering to you, but I know even some of the things in the beginning of the book, uh, and I just got the book um, the day before yesterday, but I literally just tore out the pack. I had it in my car when I went to get it. Um, and I tore it out the pack just now. So I opened it to begin to read it. But um, the reason why the Lord allowed me to start this channel, um, even in my disobedience when he told me no, um, about the narcissist when I told you that um, I fell asleep at the narcissist's house. We were fully clothed. Um, and my one of my prayer sisters called me and nobody knew where I was but my daughter. And it was it had to be like 5.30, quarter to six in the morning. My prayer sister called me. Um, and when I answered the phone, he was asleep. Um, and... Um, when she called me, she when I answered the phone and I was like, hello. Um, and she was speaking in tongues. All I heard was like, yeah, da, 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 da. And then she said to me, God said, get up and get out. Because that spirit he's dealing with want to kill you. This is what my prayer sister said to me. Mind you, I knew definitely that it was God. Um, because like I said, nobody knew where I was. Nobody knew that I fell asleep um, at the narcissist's house. Now, mind you, this was the beginning of the relationship. So even in the beginning of the relationship, God warned me not to mention that before she called me, um, and I said this in video past, but let me, I'm bringing new people up to 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 the video um and guys this was like now it had to be like three years ago maybe two years ago three years ago maybe um before my spiritual sister called me I had a dream now mind you God uses me in dreams even still today 
Um, this is why I said it's important for you guys to pay attention to your dream because the Lord will show you um, how the enemy want to combat you in your dreams and you get up and you renounce it and you decree life. Um, after you close the door and destroy the um, the tactics of the enemy in the spirit and in the natural, right? So I had this dream. And in this dream that I had before my spiritual sister called me, now mind you, I'm at the narcissist's house. We was watching some movie and we, we fell asleep, fully clothed. And I had this dream. And in this dream, I was walking down the street. I was walking down the street, but I don't know if anybody ever heard like the sound of a tree when it's about to fall. It's like a crackling sound, like it's like a, a crackling sound. If you go on YouTube and look at somebody cutting down a tree when it's because it's breaking up as it's falling over. So I'm walking down the street and I hear the sound of a tree getting ready to fall. But before I could look in back of me, the tree fell, boom, right in back of me. This is me walking down the street and the tree fell like this, boom, right there near me. But whatever was in the tree, when the tree fell, jumped out the tree, and jumped in my back. Now, mind you, this is my dream. It jumps out the tree and jumped in my back. Whatever it was, it was very foul. It was very fuzzy. It was very just, oh, uh, but it was in my back. So as I'm walking down the street, I'm walking like this because every time I moved, I feel that thing in my back like moving so I didn't want to move so I was trying to reach in my back to grab it out but I I, I didn't want it to move so I think um I got home and I asked my daughter I said because I'm still walking like this like bent back and I asked my daughter I said can you get something is in my back can you grab it out so I don't remember now if she grabbed it out. You could go back to my dream and, and listen to it. However, let me just tell you this. No, I don't think she did. In my dream, mind you, whatever it was in my back, I was between waking up and still sleep. But me and this thing was tussling. When I pulled it out my back, I pulled it out my dream, and this is the, 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 the bed. I was levitated off the bed like this, and whatever that thing was that I pulled out had me like shaking like this, and I was shaking, but I was fighting it, but it was like it was... I was going into convulsions or something. I was shaking. Now, mind you, I was levitated off the bed. True story. Uh, whatever. By 5.30, quarter to six. Now, fast forward. That's when the phone rung. When the phone rung, this is when that demonic spirit dropped me. When it dropped me, the phone was ringing. And that's when I answered the phone. And my my prayer sister, who didn't know where I was at, was speaking in tongues and said, get up and get out because the Lord said that God said that spirit that he's dealing with want to kill you. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I was like, okay, because I didn't want to wake him up. He didn't wake up no time. I was like, okay. Now, mind you, I got up. All I had to do was leave because I was fully clothed. I got up. When I got up to crawl on the other side of him to get off the bed, I had on my shoes and everything to leave. He woke up like, where you going? I was like, oh, I got to go home. You know, I got, it's things that I got to do. And if I'm not mistaken, it was the summertime. I was like, it's things that I got to do or whatever. Um, he didn't know. He was still asleep through the whole thing. Guys, even with my prayer sister calling me, I still went back. Even with God showing me 
through my dream and actually fighting that demonic spirit, I still went back and I encountered other demonic spirits, which if you go back and watch my videos, it, it, it I, I talk about it. However, I want to read you chapter one of this book and it says the realization and I was so impressed by the opening of this book I don't know and then I want to elaborate on it right so it says and this is chapter one you are seated in your living room your heart pounding as you hear his footsteps moving closer the husband you once knew has changed into a stranger a monster that lurks in the shadows and waits to attack his eyes is narrow as he enters the room, signaling signaling that you are in danger. Although you have seen this look before, there is something more sinister about it this time. He stands in your way as you try to back away and find a way out, his face contorted with rage and unadulterated hatred. Your mind um, falters as you think this cannot be your husband. Is this really him? Is this the person you fell in love with? He glares at you with start, cold eyes that seem to have turned black with wickedness. In that moment, you realize that you are dealing with something much more insidious than just the narcissist. This is evil, pure and simple evil. You attempt to calm, calm him down by talking to him rationally, but it is futile. He is unlike anything you have ever seen, beyond logic and without empathy. This book is the story of your journey and the journey of so many others as you come face to face with the evil side of narcissism. It is a story of survival, perseverance, and the human spirit's ability to overcome even the most difficult challenges. But it is also a story of warning, a reminder that narcissism is not just a harmless personality quirk, but a dangerous and destructive force that can wreak havoc on the lives of those around it. It is a call to action for all of us to recognize the signs of narcissism and to stand up against it wherever and whenever we encounter it. For the only way we can hope to defeat narcissism is by shining a light on the darkness of its evil. And that's just a little bit of this book, guys. Let me, let me, let me go back and, and, and just tell you and guys, first and foremost, I had to repent for being disobedient to God. Because had I got out, I would not have encountered all of those things that the enemy took me through. However, what the devil meant for bad, God turned it around for good. God allowed me when he saw that, seeing that, okay, this girl but she going to see. I ain't going to let him kill her, but she going to see. Allow me to start the channel, God Will Deliver Ministries, to tell you of the demonic, of the narcissist, and the many spirits, the legion of demons that the narcissists carry, right? But I like the fact that in this book, it says, this is a warning. And then it talked about the insidious of the wickedness. Guys, you have no idea um, of, of, of the wickedness of a, of a narcissist. The Lord told me that the narcissistic spirit is an enemy to the kingdom. He said it just like that. I was minding my business. I was in shop, shop right parking lot. I got out the car. I was in the car in shop right parking lot. And the Lord said, the narcissistic spirit is the enemy to the kingdom. Guys, wicked is not evil enough for the evil demonic spirits 
that the narcissist has. Evil is not enough. And I don't, this is for somebody. The more you try, because this is the enemy telling you, when he or she get rageful, just stay calm. Stay calm and talk to them. Let me tell you what stay calm look like and you not getting out. I remember something as simple as when COVID hit, I was making masks. And I got um, a lot of cells for masks. And I remember the narcissist came to my house and said, um, I have friends outside that want a couple of masks. So I said, okay. And I said, this is what I said. They make sure they give you the money. Because you know how we do. Sometimes friends be like, oh, I'll give you, I'll give you the money, whatever, you know. Not, not nothing insulting, just like that. Didn't think nothing of it. He was like, okay. Gave him the mask. He went outside. He came back with the money. When he came in the house... My whole atmosphere changed. It was like, oh, I knew the demonic because I knew the difference. I've learned the difference when the spirit would definitely manifest because the whole atmosphere, my whole space would just feel uneasy. Oh, God, thank you. When the demonic spirit, when you encounter that demonic spirit and it changes the atmosphere there is no peace there is no love you don't feel none of that you don't feel protected you don't feel hopeful you don't feel safe because that, that that's how hell is there is no love there is no peace there is no having faith there is no hope you feel none of the presence of God in the Atmosphere when that demonic spirit arise in the narcissist. And this is how I knew, oh boy, here we go. He walked, I knew something was wrong. Here I go. Hey, everything all right? Me trying to give a soft answer, turning away wrath. However, this is a, a demon. It, it don't care about that. It want to kill, steal, and destroy you. So what God desire for us is to leave and to get out. Okay? So, hey, um, everything all right? Remember, because I noticed the shift change. I didn't say nothing. I said, bae, remember you said we agree that when we, if there is a problem, we gonna talk about it. We not gonna let it fester. Remember, we gonna talk about it. What's wrong? I'm noticing a difference. This is me talking like this. Thinking I'm pacifying the demon. Yeah, something is wrong. Do you think I'm dumb or something? Hey, what? I'm, I'm confused. What? Is, how you gonna tell me like I can't count? To get the money. You you know what? You always just be. Baby. Here I go. Babe, no. I didn't mean it like that. I'm so sorry. If you took it like. Yo, I could laugh now. I'm so sorry if you took it like that. I don't think you're dumb. Babe, you're brilliant. Yeah, because I ain't dumb. You dumb. You you this. And you that. And oh, forgive me for yelling. And turn down your volume. Guys. Oh, my gosh. The. Babe, no. No, no, babe, just listen. Babe, listen. No, I was just saying because, you know, in my experience, when a person get it, you know, then they already have it, and then they be like, you know, I'm a, no, it was me. It was me. It wasn't you. I wasn't saying it because of you, babe. No, I was just saying it because of the experience that I had. Baby, let me tell you this. 
he going on and on and on. But let me tell you how that demon, because remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren, right? So that demon wanted to get me riled up. So the Satan could go before the throne and, and accuse me. So after a certain amount of this, babe, no, I'm no, like, babe, no, I would never do that to you. Now, babe, please just listen, babe, calm down. After a few of, you know what? You ain't nothing. You, I was like, nigga, you bleep, 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 that spirit, and guess what? That demonic spirit. <laughs> I knew you wasn't who you said you was. I'm gonna just play this book right here. Uh -uh. Let that sit right here. Uh huh. Let that sit right here. Uh huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? How that demonic spirit wants to get you out of character so he can go accuse you of having malice in your heart. Now I'm rageful. Now I'm angry. Now I'm cursing. Now I'm using profanity. Now I'm calling the man baby. It had to give me something that I had to repent because he was going on and on and on and on. And then guess what? After I got riled up, he left. So many encounters of talking to the demons and them manifesting. The demon even told me how it entered. Um... The demon even told me, oh, he love you, but we ain't letting him go. And let me just explain this. It's because when we sin and we keep sinning and we keep opening doors uh, wrong um, and, and keep creating these covenants and keep erecting these demonic altars in our lives, um, this is what happened with the narcissist. Instead of, to the point, pride setting. So now they can't repent because they don't think they're wrong. Everybody else is wrong but them. They will never confess that they're wrong. And even if they do, it's to draw you back in, to hoover you back in, because they do not believe that they are wrong. But they know if they confess that they are wrong to you, it hoovers you back in. What do I mean by hoovering you? You know how you have a hoover vacuum cleaner? What does a vacuum cleaner do? It suck up the dirt. So the enemy hoovers you to suck you back in with the things um, that you want to hear, but they don't really mean that. It's to draw you back in, to destroy you again. And I'm going to always say, people say, well, why do the narcissists always come back? Why do you always take them back? It's to destroy you. It's to finish you. It's to make you lose your mind. It's to give you a disease. It's to um, dampen your spirit. It's to cause trauma to your mind. It's to cause grief to you because you think you lost in, in that battle of relationships. You didn't lose the battle of relationships. The problem that we had was we keep kept getting into relationships that God said no. And we go, uh-huh, God, I'm going to just see for myself. Well, let me speak for me. That's what I said. Many of times, many of times, because of and like God used people for people, Satan also used people for people. Satan also used people for people. Guys, I'm telling you that narcissistic spirit, the Lord also revealed this to me. And he said it just like this. Again, minding my business. The Lord said, Grief and stagnation is married. i would never heard of two spirits being married. The Lord said that grief and stagnation 
is married. Let me just explain why. Now, of course, when we lose a loved one, when we lose a job, when we lose a marriage, when we lose anything, you could grieve over anything. The Bible says there is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal, right? But many people grieve to the point it caused them stagnation. Let me give you what the Lord gave me. When someone died, people be like, I don't know why I'm feeling like this. Oh my God, I just feel so sad. I just feel this. I just feel like I don't want to do anything. And then they go, oh, I feel like this because my mother's birthday is coming up. I feel like this because my father's birthday is coming up. I feel like this because my kid's birthday is coming up. Those who have passed on. And I'm just using this as an example. And then the person may even go, well, I'm not doing nothing on my on 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 that day because of guilt because of um you feeling guilty because you're still alive and it causes you to be stagnant because you can't get it together and also a lot of what people do is for a loved one that has passed on or someone that has passed on we make them an idol. The Bible says that the dead has no recollection of the living. We make the dead an idol. And God said, my name is jealous. Which causes us stagnation. Because the accuser of the brethren is going before God's throne and saying, Lord, didn't you say that there should be no other God besides you? Well, your servant, let me just say, I don't know, your servant, Didi, has made an idol and a shrine out of her dead grandmother. And she kneels before the picture and the shrine of her dead grandmother more than she seeks you. It causes us in the spirit to be stagnant of the knowledge of God. The Lord said grief and stagnation is married. If you kill grief, don't forget to kill stagnation. Because they are married, thus saith the Lord. It causes us to be stagnant in the spirit. And a lot of times, guys, guess what? Unknowingly unknowingly my people perish for a lack of knowledge but just because you did not know don't mean that the accuser of the brethren is still not going to accuse you before God's throne and he's only accusing you so he can have legal right to inflict you with something so even if you don't know, you still held accountable. I know. Guess what? We grew up in an era where it says, if we don't know we ain't held accountable, it's a lie. The Bible says, the Bible reads, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So even if we don't know, we can still perish. This is why it is good for us to seek the spirit of truth who, who knows all things of God to, to reveal things to us. The spirit of truth. This is why the Bible said it's the truth that has set you free, not a lie. A lie keep you in bondage. The lie is Satan. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Satan keep you in bondage. The Holy Spirit free you. The truth shall set you free. The lie will keep you in bondage. The lie will steal from you. The lie will cause you stagnation. The lie will cause you grief. The lie will cause you to be in chains and you don't even know it. The lie will cause you to feel weighed down and you don't know why. 
The lie will cause you to have unforgiveness, but the spirit of truth who speaks the truth will set you free. Look, you still have unforgiveness in your heart against this person. The lie will say, no, you don't. You just a little upset because of what they did to you. You always helping them and they always crossing you. The truth will say, well, it was an assignment. You should not have expected nothing from this assignment. The Lord will repay you. I pray, hear me in the spirit, guys. And I'm giving you the things that I went through on how to get free. Guys, I'm still getting free. I'm still getting free. I asked the Lord, This uh, the prophet had said to me, what are you... What are you tussling with God with? What are you holding on that God want to take that he's waking you up two, three in the morning? And I was like, I don't know, guys. I really didn't know. I was like, I don't know. I said, but I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask because I want to know because I, I want to be reconciled back to Christ. I don't want to be separated from Christ. So I had a conversation with my daughter and my daughter began to say something. And she said, like, something on the order of mom. Remember how when um, you all, you when cer a certain person always talk about something and then you bring it up and then you always elaborate on how they did you, what was the, and I was like, oh my God. I had to repent for three people that I held hostage in my heart. And I cried out before the Lord and I said, God, forgive me for holding these people hostage in my heart. Father, when your word said, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespassed against me. I called their names out and I released them unto God. And I'm going to keep doing that until I feel a breakthrough. God, I did not forgive these people. I just suppressed it and I was able to be around them. But God, in my heart, it was seeds of unforgiveness against them. Because when I would talk about what they did, I would be passionate about it like I am now. Still hurt. Still hurt. So examine yourself. Ask the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. God, am I holding any grudges in my heart against anybody? God, forgive me. Reveal it so I can release it. It is so important. Guys, unforgiveness causes a sickness. It causes a level of sickness. Physically, it caused a level of sickness because we have given Satan the legal right to inflict us. Every time I would go to the doctor because I was having problems with my knees. Now, mind you, the doctor said, oh, you have, you know, just a little arthritis in your knees. I know the root cause of arthritis is unforgiveness. You don't got to agree. I know it is. And just because you don't agree, don't, don't mean it's not true. So he said a little arthritis. But I know how Satan work. If I didn't get these seeds out of my heart, he was going to allow it to grow and to spread throughout my body. So daily... God, anything the accuser of the brethren has accused me of before your throne day and night. God, I'm guilty. Let me just tell you this. Before the great right throne, Satan cannot lie before God. Satan can lie to you. He can lie to me. He can, he's lying to the world. But before the great white throne and the courtroom of heaven, he's telling the truth. He's going before the throne of God and saying, God... Did you say that adultery, that fornication, that lasciviousness, that drunkenness was a sin? Did you say that, God? Well, your servant who has not repented for these things is doing that. And let me tell you this. God honors covenant. He's a covenant-keeping God. 
whether good or bad. This is why we need to repent so we could be in right standing and in covenant with him. The Bible says a curse without a cause cannot stand. Don't give Satan a, 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 a cause to curse you. Don't give him legal right to bring that generational curse that you have not repented of to move up on the bloodline and inflict you. Don't you do it. Repent. I don't care if you don't know if you should repent from it. Repent from it. That means you should. Repent. The Bible talks about even repenting from the things that the ancestors has done. No, we don't praise the ancestors, but I repent from the from what my mother's mother's mother, 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 and on my father's side, what they did, every doctrine of demon. I repent for every murderer in my bloodline. I repent. God, I repent. I repent for adultery, even in my bloodline. God, I repent for any secret society. God, I repent for any free men and eastern stars and um, sororities in my bloodline. God, I repent. And I am of a new bloodline, a new covenant. Yes, is that just that serious. It is that serious. Aren't you tired of Satan taking your stuff? That little old man who I told you who the Bible describes when he fall into hell, people in hell are gonna be like, this the this, this joker is the one that deceived the whole world. I pray God give you insight of who he is first and of who you are. I pray that every prophet on this line, every evangelist, every pastor on this line, repent and come into the knowledge of who you are in Christ. As a matter of fact, I decree and I declare and I smear the blood over this video and every viewer that's watching that when the enemy sees the blood, he has to pass over and that God's word would not return into him void, but it will prosper in the place where he sent it in your life in my life, in the life of your children, in the life of ministry, in the life of that business you were supposed to have, that book you supposed to write, in the life of your mind, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. I pray that this video blessed you. Please like and share and comment. Um, Guys, remember today is a good day to have a great day in Christ Jesus. Jesus loves you. Don't you ever let no demon in hell, no narcissistic, demonic spirit tell you you're nothing. You are everything in Christ. God said what he made is good and you are good. I love you. This is your girl T from God Will Deliver Ministries, G.W.Deliver2020. And yes, God is still a deliverer. Yes, God is still healing. Don't you let no false prophet or no um, preacher tell you God is not healing. God is not delivering. Yes, he is. He's delivered me. He is healing me. I am a witness of him. And I, God has no um, respective person. I'm just a servant that he um, desired to use that I'm grateful. But I am nothing without him. I am nothing without him. You don't seek me. You seek God. He is the healer, the counselor, the deliverer, the provider. He's not just a counselor, a deliverer, a, a provider. He's the ultimate. He is. He is time. Time is within him. So for time to be restored, we have to get into him. I love you guys. God is good. He is amazing. And he loves you. That is the greatest thing. Jesus loves you. And he has not forgotten about you. Have a fantabulous day, guys.